decolonize our hair products, decolonize our facial products, decolonize our clothes, decolonize our technology, decolonize our medicines, decolonize our governments, decolonize God, our religion, decolonize our faith, decolonize, the decolonization is a big word, it simply means reset the African body to factory settings. As a technological person, I think you may appreciate that. When your phone is no longer behaving nicely, just delete everything. Reload. Factory settings. And you may just have your phone performing much better. I think we have too many useless apps. Three to five billion dollars of fake hair business running through Africa. Because the African thinks not good enough. Body products, facial products, billions of dollars. Why? Because the African feels not good enough. Not good enough. And that not good enough, when it gets to your mind, you start cutting yourself, adding things and subtracting things, punching. I've seen, have you seen some of those celebrities after they come from surgery and they look like Halloween, Halloween night? Look like ghosts from the from the graveyards. Because when you are not happy with what you are and who you are, life knows no vacuum. You will occupy yourself with the character, behaviors, and habits of those that have colonized you. Decolonization, reset the African mindset to factory settings. My best example I can give you is the student revolution that has happened over uh, students standing with uh, Palestine, Columbia University, Oxford University, South African University, British universities. The whole of uh, America is on fire as we speak right now. Why? Because when the cause is right, it strikes a chord with everybody else. Burkina Faso, Mali, now, as of two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Senegal has even walked onto the stage with a much bolder statement. Pack up and go. Switched off the TVs and what and what and just, just go. And anyone who thinks that, see, our age groups, the 40 years and above, we're in the deep end because we are now CEOs of Old Mutual. We are CEOs of... Uh, uh, multinational companies. We are beneficiaries. We are almost looking forward to our retirement. We don't want the system to change <laughs> because we benefit. But the students have nothing to lose. They are actually looking forward to a much more integrated society than the parents are. Take note. The opening up of universities to international students. Now here you are, top of the crop, Harvard University with Pakistani students, with Palestine students, in the same classroom, with Jewish students, and American bigoted parents, students, children, in the same class. Friendships amongst the students. Common understanding. <laughs> Unity and harmony amongst them. And then your father is the army general in Palestine. <laughs> and I am a victim. My sister lost her legs and her eyes and your father killed my sister. The politics changes altogether. So if you're looking at what has happened to Burkina Faso as a joke, the younger generation is beginning to hear a different voice of liberation. That it is possible. We cannot be called Africa and a poor third world dark African continent. When right now we can also speak English. We can recite poetry. We can also run machineries like everybody else. We can create our own fashions. We can do our own engineering. We now know what gold looks like. We now know what diamonds look like. We now know what platinum and lithium can produce. We can also make our own industry and produce our own batteries. No, man, something is not happening here. Something is, someone is not telling the truth here. And that frustration, worse, when these young people are now graduating from schools and they can't find employment because the colonial system only funnels a few. Mathematics and English, you pass there, 
Then you get to school, you get scholarships, and then they swallow you back. The rest of you go back to work. So and you cannot run a system which, which literally tells you you failed primary school, you failed high school, you failed your, your, your college, and you have all these dumping sites away from school. You start class at primary school, a hundred of you. By the time you get to primary school, maybe it's 80 of you. By the time you get to high school, maybe it's only 50 of you. By the time you get to college, maybe it's only 10 of you. By the time you come to graduate school, maybe it's only three of you. The same class that you had in your primary school, if right now you said, now you're a doctor, a professor, how many of you? It could be one or two. What happened to the other? What happened to the other 98? They fizzled out into spaces. And when you look at a system that throws away people like that, frustration begins to grow on the wings. And as such, what happened in Mali, what is happening in Senegal, what is happening in Burkina Faso, what is happening in Niger? See, you're asking that question. Didn't this start in Niger? And then from Niger to Mali, from Burkina Faso, now Senegal, and watch the space as the young people of Africa, just like the Palestine uh, student revolution, as it begins to happen. It's very interesting to note. Any government that is going to have elections in the next two to three years, take an advice from a fool. That is me. You need to watch very carefully the youth vote and the direction of their intentions. The young people are now tired of old goats who go to parliament as a retirement package, who simply go there just to maintain the status quo and continuously show a smile at the United Nations when taking pictures with whites and come back home here and there's no change. So yes, I can confirm the revolution has started. It will not stop. We'll do well to cooperate with each other, to deliver the Africa that we want. And I'm part of that revolution. And I was actually prepared. Had France striked uh, Niger, I was ready to go to war myself and go and join him in the liberation of Africa. That is the Che Guevara spirit. The, the, the white community, because the black community is already in huge suspicion, the quality of relationships that we are going to establish going forward are not going to be based on the terms of reference of the colonial system, where we are coming from. I mean, big kudos to China, big kudos to Russia for coming in, not as is, not, rightfully so. We don't, we don't hear them getting involved directly in terms of fighting, but their support, great support, even in terms of, we need a big brother, let's be honest, when it comes to security and other things, both the Americans and the British and the French will not take the losses lying down. 